we're going to be looking at power functions and their operations. First thing we need to do is identify what a power function is. And a power function is the form y equals a times x raised to the b. So we have an exponent in here, which is where we get the name power function. We're going to use the two functions, f of x is equal to 2x to the 1 half, and g of x is equal to negative 6x to the 1 half. First thing we're going to be asked to do is add them. So f of x plus g of x. I've written it out 2x to the 1 half plus negative 6x to the 1 half. Well now what you have to realize is, remember when we add or subtract, we have to look for like terms. And in this case, I do have like terms. I have x to the 1 half and x to the 1 half. This would be like the tiger from the tiger example. So if I have two of these things and I take away six of them, I'm going to end up with negative four of those x to the 1 halves. With subtraction, I do basically the same thing. I take my f of x, which is 2x to the 1 half. I'm going to minus a negative 6x to the 1 half. Well, this case, when I take minus this negative, it turns into plus a positive. So when I have two of these things and I add six more of those things, I end up with 8x to the 1 halves. So this is kind of just like adding two of those tigers plus six of those tigers. I don't do anything to my label. It doesn't become tiger squared, so the x to the 1 half just stays x to the 1 half. Multiplication. Now you've got to kind of switch gears into your thinking, and you've got to, um, you don't have to have like terms now for multiplication. You need to have the same bases. So first I'm going to go ahead and multiply my regular numbers. That 2 times negative 6 is going to give me a negative 12. Now I have to think about what is x to the 1 half times x to the 1 half. Well now remember, when I multiply these problems, I add my exponents. So 1 half plus 1 half gives me 1. So I actually end up with x to just the first power. So my simplified answer for this one would be negative 12x. And we have to do multiplication. So if I take f of x divided by g of x, I'm going to have 2x to the 1 half divided by negative 6x to the 1 half. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on just my regular numbers. 2 over negative 6, I can reduce that down to a 1 and a negative 3. And now I can work on my x's. Well, if I have x to the 1 half divided by x to the 1 half, I have the same bases, so my rules for my exponents say I need to subtract. Well, 1 half minus 1 half is 0, so I have x to the 0. And we have a rule that deals with x to the 0. It tells us it's just a 1. So on top, I just have a 1 and on the bottom I have a negative 3. Okay, when we're doing these problems, we're going to have to start talking about domain. And if you remember from quite a while ago, our domain is our input values. It's the x values that we deal with. There's two things that we have to consider when doing domain. First rule is we cannot divide by 0. So if you have division anywhere in your problem, you have to figure out what values would make the denominator 0 because we can't have those values. Second thing is we don't want any imaginary numbers, so we want to make sure that we don't take even roots of any negatives. Those are the two things we're going to be checking for, dividing by 0 and even roots of negatives. When you're working with more than one function, like in the last example we just added two functions together, you have to consider both of the equations. And I'll show you what I mean by that in just a little bit. So if we're dealing with more than one, you have to consider the originals also when you're doing domain. So here's going to be a couple practice problems. It's the same functions that were on a previous slide. And remember when I took f of x plus g of x, I ended up with negative 4x to the 1 half power. Now what we want to do is we need to find the domain. Now, I've got to think about those two things. I have to think about dividing by 0. Well, as I look at my original problem, I had 2x raised to the 1 half plus negative 6x raised to the 1 half. Um, that would be the same thing as saying 2 square roots of x plus negative 6 square roots of x. My answer I could have rewritten as negative 4 square roots of x. So now when I start thinking about this divide by 0, 
I don't have any fractions, I don't have any division, so I don't have to worry about dividing by zero. That condition for that problem doesn't exist in this particular case, so I don't have to worry about it. Now we have to look at even roots. You can tell if you have an even root if the denominator of your exponent is an even number. So we have a lot of twos for denominators, which is a square root. So I have to think to myself, what value would cause me to have an imaginary number for this f of x portion? Because I have to consider f of x, g of x, and my answer when I'm figuring out my domain. So if I focus on just this f of x portion, I would get an imaginary number if I had anything less than zero. So I've got to keep that in mind. I, I do not want numbers less than zero. Now when I look at my g of x, I've got to think the same thing. What would give me an imaginary number? And in this case it would be the same thing, anything less than zero. Now when I uh, consider my final answer, I end up with the same thing for this one. I would only get an imaginary number if I had anything less than zero. So my domain is a statement of things I can have. So I can basically have my domain be anything that's zero or bigger. And the way we're going to write it for right now is my domain is that x has to be bigger than or equal to zero. The reason it can be equal to zero is because I can take the square root of zero and be okay. It's not going to give me an imaginary number. Now on this next one, the f of x divided by g of x. Well, that would be 2x to the 1 half divided by that negative 6x to the 1 half. And we already solved this previously. We get negative 1 third. Now when I'm going to find my domain, and I look at my final answer, negative 1 third, there isn't even an x in there. So according to just my final answer, I would have no restrictions on my domain. I've got to consider my starting equations also. I have to consider both of my starting ones. So I'm going to tackle the problem of dividing by zero first. We have an issue with that in this problem because we have division. We have 2x to the 1 half divided by negative 6x to the 1 half. Now the only thing that causes me a problem when I'm doing division is if I have this bottom be equal to zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find that problem because then I know what number I need to throw out. So if I take 6x to the 1 half and I set it equal to 0, divide both sides by negative 6, and I get x to the 1 half is equal to 0 still, I need to square both sides, and I get x equals 0. So for this particular one, if I put 0 into this bottom equation, I'm going to end up dividing by 0. So this is a bad number. I do not want 0 when I go to my domain. We've got to kind of keep that in the back of our minds is that I do not want zero. Now I have to go and check that second issue we sometimes have, even roots of negatives. Well, my denominator of my exponent fraction is two, which means I have an even root. If I look at only the top one, x to the one half is the square root of x, I would get an imaginary if I had a negative. So according to just this idea of the square root, I need something that's not negative, so I need x to be greater than or equal to zero. If I look at the bottom portion here, I have x to the one half again, which is again the square root of x. To avoid the imaginary thing, I would need x to be greater than or equal to zero. So now I have to combine all three of these ideas. Well, my top two go together really nicely because they're the same thing. So I'm just going to ignore one of them. Now, I've got to combine these two ideas here. I need x to be greater than or equal to zero to take care of the imaginary thing, but right down here I said I couldn't have zero. So when I put those together, my domain turns into x just has to be greater than zero. Okay, so here's a set of practice problems. Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can perform the operation and then state the domain also. And remember, when you're looking for the domain, you want to check are you going to have a problem dividing by zero? Are you going to have any even roots? Okay, the first one might have been a little bit tricky. When you write out 3x minus x to the 1 fourth, there are no like terms here, so that's all the farther it can be simplified. Then for our domain, there's no division anywhere in my problem, so I don't have to check for dividing by 0, but I do have this even root right here. I have a fractional exponent, and it has an even number for the denominator, so this is really saying the fourth root of x.
So I've got to ask myself, what number would give me an imaginary unit? Well, in this case, if x were negative, I would get an imaginary. So my domain is that x has to be greater than or equal to 0. Second one, start with 3x divided by x to the 1 fourth. I've got a division problem now, which means I subtract my exponents. So I end up with 3 times x to the 3 fourths. Now, if you only consider your domain for this portion right here, you would have x is greater than or equal to 0. Because I have that fourth root again, I can't take the fourth root of the negative without getting imaginary, so it would have to be bigger than or equal to 0. But the problem we run into with that is I have to consider my original problem also. My original problem is a division problem. And I cannot divide by 0, so I have to set my denominator equal to 0 and figure out what value is going to be bad. So I need to raise both to the fourth power, and I end up getting x equals 0. This is a bad number. I do not want 0. So I had to modify my domain a little bit. x can only be bigger than 0, because if it were 0, I'd be dividing by 0, and we'd have an issue with that.